How's it going Guardians? Shifty here and it's been a while but I'm back with another Destiny 2 video. Now I've already put out a guide on how to get the first chest in the Vow of the Disciple raid solo, however I wanted to make an updated guide that shows you how to do it in a much easier and faster way. So that's what I'm going to be doing in today's video. Before I jump into the guide, I do want to warn you that if you have not added any weapons or armor to your collection from the raid, you will not get any of that stuff from the chest. You can only get weapons and armor from the chest that you've earned in a raid encounter. However, you will still get 5 spoils of conquest. On top of that, you can get the Vow of the Disciple raid mods. Each week, if you choose to do this on a Warlock, Hunter, and Titan, you will get a total of 15 spoils of conquest. Of course, before I jump in, if you end up enjoying today's video, make sure to hit that like button and if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe as well. Alright, so to get started, I do recommend putting on a rocket launcher or some sort of linear fusion rifle so you can easily take out the one enemy we have to kill in this. Alright, then once your loadout is ready, we're going to go ahead and get ammo to jump into the raid with. So head to the Enclave, then head behind the crafting table and down into this room. Once you're down here, if you fire your weapons for just a second, you should get some ammo back in just a short amount of time. Just like that. And then we're ready to load up the raid. So I'm going to go ahead and load up the Vow of the Disciple raid. As you can see, the ammo we just acquired carried over into the raid. You're going to want to push forward a little bit. The only enemy we have to take out is the projection of Sabathun. Gallowhorn makes an excellent weapon for this. And if you feel like you'll run out of rocket ammo, you can always bring a sniper along as well. Once that projection is down, we can move on to the next area. That is the only enemy we'll have to take out this entire time. So the next step is going to be to destroy the three crystals that will open the door to the chest. So in my original guide, I had us killing all of the enemies right at this part. However, you can actually just skip these enemies you will gain stacks of pervading darkness. The first crystal is going to be just to the left of this tree. Once that crystal is destroyed, we can move on to the next, which is going to be down this corridor of columns. Right at the very end, we can shoot the crystal, hop on the sparrow, and backtrack just a little bit. Now, we are gaining stacks of pervading darkness, like I said, and once I hit 10, I will die. But I'm making my way to the next crystal anyway. So I will die here, however that's not that much of a setback as we spawn right here again. So what I'm going to do is just hop on my sparrow. And right over this I'm going to drop down and the final crystal is right here. Now you can make it to the chest from here. You may die right as you open the chest if you're quick enough. However it's fine if you die. All the crystals should be good to go. And you can simply just respawn and head over here to the chest. And here it is. I'm probably going to die right away. And there it is. So I did get raid loot here because I have earned it from an encounter. But just as a reminder, you will only get spoils of conquest and perhaps a raid mod if you have not done any encounters in the raid. Anyway, that's all I have for today's video. I just wanted to help you get some spoils of conquest if you're trying to get something from the exotic kiosk in the tower. Additionally, you may be saving up to try and get some more weapons at the end of the raid if you ever do the Vow of the Disciple raid, which I highly recommend doing. It's a pretty fun time. Anyway, that is it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, remember to like and subscribe. I just want to thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.